Randomness is a property that's present in most games. With some, its effect is felt subtly, working behind the scenes to shape the small details. In others, it's the main mechanic, making each playthrough a unique experience. When it comes to speedrunning, randomness is one of the biggest sources of frustration and reset runs, with Melee in particular having one character that's been a bane to players for years. Today we'll be looking at how random numbers are generated in Melee and the history of RNG manipulation across different game modes. I hope you enjoy today's video. Speedrunners agree that any method of eliminating RNG is fantastic, and this video's sponsor helps like no other when it comes to the Taco Speedrun Challenge. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that delivers amazing boxes of high-end items from quality brands. Before your box ships each month, you're able to preview it, and if you're not satisfied with the contents, you can swap items around or skip the month without being charged. They tailor what they ship to each customer based on a preference quiz you fill out when you join, with each box containing about $70 worth of value for the price of $49. To help with the taco speedrun, I was shipped the Hecho box, which includes some do-it-yourself hot sauces, mortar and pestle, and taco stand to help save time on assembly. That's not all, however. The Forge box with its trusty all-purpose knife and dapper blue handle that I was able to select helped me achieve tomato skip in style. Completing the taco speedrun has never been easier thanks to the help of Bespoke Post. And to get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter Abisoft20 at the checkout, or go to bespokepost.com slash 20 And with that, let's crush some tacos as we get into the video. If you're unfamiliar with the term RNG, it stands for Random Number Generator, and it's commonly used to refer to random events that you encounter in games. Under the hood, there are a lot of different methods to create the appearance of randomness, and the particular method that Melee uses is called a Linear Congruential Generator, or LCG for short. We won't be getting a math lesson on how it works, but there are a couple of details that are important. An LCG starts with a seed value and performs iterations upon it to change its value over time. When a random event needs to be determined, the game references the value of the RNG seed to get an answer for what should happen. I said that the LCG creates an appearance of randomness, and that's because it's not truly random. For Melee, the RNG seed has a possible 4 billion different values before it will repeat. So while it's not entirely random, the range of values is large enough that you can't predict what's going to happen next. If we look at the equation that references the RNG seed when it needs to make a calculation, we see that there are actually two functions that govern Melee's random events. The second isn't understood very well, and attempts to reverse engineer it have yielded some strange results, like enemy AI breaking when you mess with it. The first function was easier to decipher, and it was discovered that it's used to determine many random events, such as when Luigi's side special misfires, what random character will be selected, and the starting seed value when you arrive on the main menu. It's quite a versatile function that the developers seem to stick everywhere, as it's even called to determine the height of Sheik's needles. The initial research into this was done by 212 Degrees and was posted to Reddit in 2017, and it would be about a year before this knowledge got put to use by speedrunners. Let's fast forward to 2018. The All-Stars mode becomes available after you've unlocked every character in the game. It has 13 stages and pits you against the entire roster in a series of fights. With the number of opponents you face being increased as you reach certain progression milestones, the order you fight the characters in is determined randomly, with the stage you compete on being decided by which character you're fighting. And on later matches where there's more than one opponent, the first character in the list decides what the stage will be. When you enter All-Stars mode, the list of characters is presented to you in the top left of the screen, which allows for some strategizing, with the biggest problem runners encounter being the combination of enemies on the later stages. Enemies in Melee can do a lot of things to cost time in a speedrun. To help mitigate this time loss, runners can set the difficulty to very easy so that they walk towards you in most cases. But there's still the issue of what combination of enemies you'll receive in the later matches. Certain AI groups just won't cooperate, leaving players to deal with rogue NPCs that want to steal time away from their world record attempts. But all of that changed when Save State joined the battle. 
If you're unfamiliar with Save State, they've been involved with some of the biggest glitch discoveries in speedrunning history, like the stop and swap credits warp using Paper Mario and Ocarina of Time, beating the OOT demo in Brawl, and the incredible SRM glitch that had OOT beaten in under four minutes. Save State was familiar with the work that 212 Degrees had posted to Reddit and decided to apply it to the All Stars speedrun, and what they found was game breaking. It turns out that when you enter the All-Stars mode, the game uses the RNG function to determine the arrangement of characters you'll be fighting based off the current seed value. Given this knowledge, SaveState created a tool that allows you to manipulate RNG so that you always get a predetermined arrangement of characters. It works by looking at your current seed and then calculating how many increments you are away from a seed that would produce the desired characters. To calculate what your current seed is, the program requires some input from the player, which is done by selecting random characters on the character select screen. Random characters are surprisingly determined by RNG, so by rolling roughly 10 random ones and entering them into the program, it's able to identify what seed you're currently on, and then tell you how far away your current value is from the perfect seed for an All-Stars run. To get the world record seed, you need to perform some inputs that increment the value of your seed by a fixed amount, and the action of rolling a random character adds 2 to your current value. So if you're 16 away, you need to roll 8 more random characters to get on the perfect seed. With this tool, SaveState was able to find seeds for all-stars where the enemies would appear in good combinations and be defeated quickly. So no rogue AI would end up costing time, as long as the player stuck to the plan for dispatching them. It didn't take long before Save State bagged a world record of 3745, a huge improvement of almost 2 seconds. And this raised the question within the community, is RNG manipulation cheating? While it's generally agreed that manipulating RNG isn't cheating as it's viewed as exploiting flaws in a system within the game, the idea of using external tools to help is relatively new in speedrunning. The melee tool doesn't have an effect on the game's code and doesn't do any inputs for the player and the community have all accepted its use for doing runs, but let me know what you think down below as we move ahead to 2021, where another game mode would have its RNG solved. Before we leave 2018, it's worth mentioning that Blue Candy made a tool-assisted speedrun for the home run contest using Peach, where the first item she pulls with her down B was manipulated to be a stitch face turnup. For reasons we won't get into yet, doing this in real time is very difficult, but it did prove that it was theoretically possible. After the TAS, it would be three more years before another RNG development would be made in Melee, when Break the Targets was cited up by Judge9. Judge is a longtime Melee player in both PvP and Stadium games, and he decided to apply the RNG tool that Save State made to a different problem. Instead of using it to determine character arrangements, he was going to use it to manipulate an item pull with Peach. When it comes to RNG, Peach's down B is one of the most random moves in the game, with 11 different items being possible for her to pull out of the ground when it's used. Each item has its own odds of being drawn, but the random function breaks down the equation further. First, a random number is rolled between 0 and 127. If the result is 0, then Peach will pull an item, of which there are three different possibilities. Each of these have different odds of occurring if the first check determines an item will be dug up, but the majority of time you'll be seeing turnips. Turnips have overwhelming odds of appearing, and like the item roll, they break down into different possibilities, with some being more common than others. The rare turnips have different properties than the common ones, with the damage being increased on the wink, dot eyes, and stitch face turnips. But for Break the Targets, the item we want is the bomb. Peach's stage has a target to the far left that is sheltered behind a wall, but with a bomb, it's possible to have the explosion's hitbox clip through and destroy the target. This saves a huge amount of time from walking over and using a move like the old strategy did, so any manipulation that could guarantee a bomb would be a welcome addition. To do this, Judge iterated upon Save State's original program and made a website where you could click on the random characters you were rolling up when trying to identify your seed, which saved time over having to enter their names manually. Judge takes it a step further, however. 
RNG is inert on Peach's stage, meaning it doesn't increment while you don't press buttons. So you can enter the stage and perform moves to increase your RNG seed value, with the program telling you what combination will get you to the desired seed. Once you've fixed the seed, all you need to do is restart the attempt, and your first item pulled will be the bomb. You'd think this would make the world record relatively free for Judge, but because you're pressing buttons during the attempt, the RNG seed will change unpredictably, and the strategy he used requires two more items to be pulled, a turnip and a beam sword. The additional item pulls leave a large amount of RNG in the course, but the guaranteed bomb allows players to perform attempts more quickly, and Judge would set the first record with manipulated RNG in June of 2022, with a time of 9.23. Moving deeper into the current year, there was an effort made to bring the human theory task that Blue Candy made into reality, but there was one huge problem that made this almost impossible. Unlike on Peach's BTT stage where RNG is static, it advances every frame in the home run contest. This means that if you want to manipulate an item pull for Peach, you need to hit down B on the first frame of the attempt starting, or the manipulation will fail. Frame-perfect tricks aren't uncommon in speedrunning, but that doesn't make them easy to pull off. If we compare the old strategy to the TAS, we see that players opted to go for pulling a bomb at the end instead of trying to go for a stitch face at the start and a bomb so that the run wasn't as reset heavy. To get an idea of how much runners reset on the old route despite having lower RNG requirements, current HRC champ Typo grinded out 438 attempts where he got to the end before a bomb was pulled. This doesn't count all of the attempts that were reset before getting to the bomb, so you can just imagine how reset heavy the task strat would be if it was unmanipulated with its two separate item pulls. But, as was the case with All-Stars and Break the Targets, the home run contest would see a manipulation. To reiterate the problems a manip needed to solve, a double pull strategy was viewed as too RNG heavy to grind for, and any manipulation in HRC was only viable for the first frame. Additionally, for reasons that aren't understood, the RNG on HRC can be advanced an extra step before your attempt starts, which means that even successful manips can randomly fail. Judge would tackle these problems, and his solution was quite ingenious. Since a one-frame window was viewed as too risky, what if it was increased to two? Instead of finding a single RNG seed where a stitch face would be pulled, Judge decided to look for two subsequent seeds where the pull was guaranteed. This made hitting the window at the start a lot easier, and made it possible for the manip to work if the game decided to randomly advance the RNG by an extra frame. To accomplish this task, he tweaked the website, and before long, a new tool for searching up successive stitch face seeds was ready for use. Typo would jump on this opportunity and created a new manip strategy, so let's have a look. Unlike every other character, this is the only strat in HRC where you don't grab the bat first. Instead, it starts with the item pull for obvious reasons. The stitch face is important because its base throw damage is 34% so you can juggle it with the bat for huge damage in your combos. There is a problem, however. Despite its strong damage, the Stitch Face has a strange property where after being thrown, its regrab range extends. This means that a jab throw combo, which is easy to execute and effective at dealing damage, won't work, as after one throw, the regrab range is large enough that you'd have to readjust your position, which costs time. Instead, a combination of throws and hits are used to launch the sandbag off of the back wall before a bat and stitch face combo are set up, where the sandbag is hitting into both items while using down airs to maintain its position on the platform, before going for an unmanipulated bomb pull. You might be wondering why this strategy wasn't used with unmanipulated attempts, and that's because it wasn't developed until it was possible to alter RNG. And even if it had been known, the attempts to complete a world record would have been greatly increased due to the odds of the items being pulled occurring in about 0.004% of attempts. So how much did the record increase? Using the previous strat developed by SSBM Stuff, Typo had a distance of 7,673 feet. But thanks to RNG manipulation, he was able to improve that by 967 feet making Peach the character with the third farthest distance. 
This manip didn't make the record free, and to give you an idea of how much grinding it required, Typo estimates that his success rate with the manipped pull was somewhere between 30 and 50 percent, and it took him a total of 258 attempts of getting the turnip before he clutched a world record. There's one question that's likely on your mind. Could this be used in a tournament setting to get a competitive advantage in player versus player matches? The answer to that is a resounding no, as RNG advances every frame when two or more characters are active on the selection screen. And even if that weren't the case, a second player doing inputs would scramble whatever seed you were hoping to manipulate. That's the history of RNG manipulation in Melee. In already optimized categories, it brought the records down to places previously thought unobtainable. And if you want to see more Melee histories, check out these two videos I did on Break the Targets and Home Run Contest. And if you're wondering what my next world record progression will be, subscribe to my Patreon, or watch this conveniently placed announcement trailer.